One of the nicest new features in the latest version of ESDE is playtime tracking. So if I open up my game list here, you could see here now in Castlevania, I've played this for 2.1 hours. And essentially what this is doing is when you launch the game, ESD is gonna start counting the number of seconds that you're in that game before you exit. And then when you exit, it's gonna lock in that time and then add it to whatever number was there before. So if I look at the metadata for this game, you can see here, gameless metadata, there's a new metadata setting for games called Playtime. And Playtime is recorded in seconds. And basically, every time you open a game, it's adding to that number. So what's cool about this is you basically get a display of Playtime directly in the UI. Now, themes need to be updated to support Playtime, so the theme you're using may not display it just yet, but it's something that theme creators are looking at now, so hopefully soon the theme you like also displays this data. Now, one thing to keep in mind is devices like this go to have a sleep mode. So if you launched Castlevania and then stayed in the game and went to sleep, um, ESD is still going to count the number of seconds that you're in sleep because ESD doesn't know that you're in sleep mode. So there's another setting to look for here called uh, Other Settings, Max Playtime Tracking. And essentially what this states is if you're in a game and you put it to sleep, then this is the maximum amount of hours that will be captured before ESD stops tracking time. So it's like a safeguard. But ultimately what you should probably do is if you're playing a game and you want to keep accurate playtime tracking, exit the game, put the device to sleep, and then restart the game again later. Some other settings though you could play with here is if you want to turn off play tracking altogether, you don't want to track playtime at all, you could set this to zero. And if you don't want to have any limits on play tracking at all, you could set it to 24 hours at the top here. So play with this setting to find what works for you. But my advice is if you're playing a game and you want to make sure you're accurately capturing time played, exit, put the device to sleep, and then restart when you're ready to play again. But yeah, playtime tracking is natively installed. Ah, one more thing I'll show you. If you ever need to tweak playtime for a given game, let's say it overtracked because you were in sleep, uh, you could again go into the game's metadata and go to that same setting I was showing you before, playtime right here and you could simply edit it to the correct value that would show the accurate amount of time you've played. So all those options exist. Playtime's natively now a feature in ESD, and uh, yeah, hope you like it. So let's talk about dual screen support. Now by default, ESD always launches on the screen that it's launched from. So in this case, if I launch ESD from the bottom screen, it's gonna show up on the bottom screen. And if I choose to launch ESD on the top screen, it's gonna launch on the top screen. What's cool about this is you could easily switch between both just by launching ESDE on the screen you want. Now, what didn't exist before that now exists in the latest version is the ability to launch games on another screen. So out of the box by default today, when ESD launches a game, it tries to launch it on the screen that it's on. So for dual screen setups, we've added an option now in main menu, other settings, and there's a setting here called launch games on the other screen. When that is set to true, what ESD will try to do is launch a game on the other screen. So in the case of this setup here, because I have an ESD running on the bottom screen, when it launches a game, it's gonna launch it on the top screen. So this is pretty neat, let me show you. So if I go to last played here, and then launch Monster World 4, you can see here that it's gonna launch Monster World 4 here on the top screen. And because that's in place now, what I can do so if I tap on the bottom screen again, and then go to the media viewer, I could view things like the manual for the game right here. So I could browse through the manual, see how to play the game, while also playing the game on the top screen. Now the thing to watch for in this type of setup is you have to make sure that you're focused on the screen you want controls to work in. So right now I've tapped up there so I could use controls. And if I wanted to browse the guide, I just tap below here to then navigate through the guide and then tap on the top again to exit. And then I have to tap on the bottom here again to get back to ESD. But yeah, with that set up in place, you basically multitask really nicely. So that's a new feature in the latest version of ESD. So next up, we've added native support for native ports. So it essentially means that across a few different systems in ESD, you can now launch native ports of games directly from the system folder. As an example, if I go into Nintendo 64 here, utilities, sorry, other settings, alternative emulators, you can see here there's a new option here called native port. 
So let's say I had like a decompilation that I wanted to launch, but I wanted to have it sit in the Nintendo 64 system directory. I could basically go add that game into the folder, then go into that game's options, edit game's metadata, and then change alternative emulator to native port. And it would launch the native port directly. I'll add the details in the description below for how to set this up. And if it would help to have a dedicated video as well, just let us know and we'll be glad to make one. All right. Next up, we've added a PS3 eSupport for Android, which means now on Android, you could launch PS3 games directly from ESDE. Uh, here's my PS3 system on my Android device, and I have two games installed here. The first one is a package game, and the second is a disc game. And if I go into the settings for the game here, with PS3, you're going to have to play with the alternative emulator section here. If you open that up, you'll basically see three options. If the game is installed as a package, then you're going to use Game Serial Standalone. If the game is a directory or disk, you're going to use one of these two options below. So yeah, out of the box, it works natively now. So if I launch Afterburner Climax here, you'll see essentially that it launches uh, the emulator and that gets me into the game directly. And then once this finishes, I'll try to exit and show you how it brings us back to ESDE. And if it'll help to have a dedicated video on this, just let us know. We'll glad to put the video together, show you how to set this up. So once this finishes building SPU cache, we'll see we basically launch into the game. And now if I press back here and quit, it takes me back to ESDE. So yeah, Android now has PS3 emulator and front end support. Next on Android, we've also added support for Game Native and Game Hub Lite. So you can see here, I have a Windows system set up on my Android device. And in that I have Celeste set up. Now, if I press the edit, edit games metadata option here, you'll see if I go down to alternative emulator that there's two new options here, game native and game hub light. Essentially this works similar as they do on windows. You essentially just create a steam, um, a steam shortcut, place it in the windows directory, and then you'll be able to select one of these emulators and launch the game. So if I go into Game Native, Game Native has a really nice setup for this. So here's my Game Native setup here. Let's exit out of this for a second. One second. All right, continue offline. If I go into Celeste and then the Game menu here, you can see there's a new option here called Export for Front End. If you press that, it's going to create this game.steam file. You're just going to save that in your ROMs directory slash Windows directory and then ESD will see it on Android and it should link directly and launch the game natively. So yeah, that's, bu that's built in now directly into ESD on Android. So you can launch games directly for Game Native and Game Hub Lite now. Awesome. All right, also on Android, we've added support for ARM SX2 as an emulator. So now if you go into ESDE, you could change your alternative emulator to be ARM SX2. So if I go into main menu, other settings, alternative emulators, and then go down to PS2. In addition to Aether SX2, you're also gonna see ARM SX2 as a new option. You could also do that on a per game basis. So if I wanted to say launch Amplitude in ARM SX2, I can go to edit this game's metadata, alternative emulators, and then set it here. So yeah, ARM SX2 support now is native in ESDE. Also working thanks to the devs of that emulator. So let's close out with some additional notable updates for ESDE 3.4.0. The first is when you open up ESDE now, the splash screen is just going to say ESDE, no longer Emulation Station Desktop Edition. Next, if you open up the Start menu and go to Scraper, Other Settings, and open up Region here, you're going to see a larger amount of regions you could use as your default for scraping. So this should allow you to scrape content and images more close to a region that you're familiar with. Next, in Scraper, if you go to Mix Image Settings, you could set your file format for Mix Image Generation to WebP now going forward, and that should help reduce the file size needed to store Mix Images on your device. And then last but not least, if you go into UI Settings, and then go to Application Language, you've also added Arabic as a language here, so now you could use ESD in more of your native languages as well. So that's it. A lot of updates in 3.4.0. I'm going to leave a full change log in the description below. Thank you for checking this out. 
And uh, yeah, thank you for using ESTE. Take care.